In today's video, we're going to go over how to install crown molding after removal of popcorn ceiling. Yes, believe it or not, this ceiling was covered in popcorn texture. If you have not seen the removal video, check out the links in the description or the video card at the end. Before we start the molding install, I would highly recommend prepping the molding. It's a lot easier to do a light sand and painting before you mount it. Use 220 grit sandpaper for sanding and three inch brush to get the best coverage. Here's the list of things you will need for the job. Pause the video if you need it. Most importantly, you will need a hand from a buddy to help with managing the long pieces of molding. In my case, it's my dad. He's been helping me with this renovation from the start. Fun fact, this is our third remodel together. First we did his condo, then we did my condo, and now we're working on my in-laws place. So by the time I get to my forever home, I'll be an old pro. You know what they say, it's always better to practice on someone else's house. All right, enough about me. Let's start by showing you how to knock this project out. My method is a little different than anything out there on YouTube. Instead of nailing the molding in the studs and using caulk to adhere the molding to this walls and ceiling, like most folks, we will be installing scrap pieces of wood around the perimeter of the room to secure the molding to. This method works really well for molding over three and a half inches. Anything smaller, it's not necessary. It provides a solid mountain surface and prevents the molding from shifting around as the building settles over time. Best place to source spruce is a local lumber yard along with your molding. In my experience, lumber yards have way better pricing and the prices are negotiable if you're buying in bulk for a project like this. The spruce pieces need to be installed at a particular angle. So I'm using a sample cut of molding I made to set the spruce in place before I nail it up. It's important to get the angle right so the molding can sit flush up against the wall and the ceiling. As we are installing spruce, let's talk about how to select molding we need for this room. Keep in mind that most moldings come in standard lengths of 8 feet, 12 feet, and 16 feet, and a variety of widths and styles. It's always best to go with the longest length you can find for the room to prevent scarf joints in the molding. It's not only easier, but it's more aesthetically pleasing to the eye. Now that we have the spruce installed, let's go over how to measure pieces. You always want to measure about two inches below the ceiling from the wall to wall on the inside corners. As for the outside corners, mark the length you need on the molding piece itself to get the exact fit. To make my life a little bit easier during the cutting process, I created myself some template pieces. When you first start cutting this stuff, it's like plain 3D chess, but you'll get the hang of it after a few cuts. Check out the video in the description or the card at the end to see how to cut molding if you've never done it before. Let's cut our first piece and install it on the wall. Once the first side of the molding is cut, place the measuring tape along the bottom side of the molding at the tip of the cut and mark the length of the wall. Slide the molding down and cut the other side. Now that we have a first piece, let's get it installed on the wall. While you're carrying the molding around, cover the cut edge with your hand to prevent any accidental damage to your walls. Both you and whoever's helping you should have a set of sample pieces so we can accurately line up the molding in each corner to ensure that the next piece fits great on both ends. Because I'm a righty, I will work to my left around the room so I can hold the pieces with my left hand and comfortably nail them in with my right. Let's get to cutting the next piece. Measure the length of the piece you need by placing the tape measure under the installed molding to the opposite corner. Make your cut piece at least eighth of an inch longer than your measurement so you have some margin for error. You can always make the piece shorter if it doesn't fit. I've learned this the hard way, so you don't have to. In fact, I had to trim most of the pieces two or three times just to get a nice snug fit in the corners. It's important to note that you should not force pieces that are too long into the corners where they're puncture and sheetrock because they will not line up. The piece should just slide right in from corner to corner. Now let's move on to the outside corners of the wall. The right side cut of this piece is the left inside corner as you can see from my sample. We will cut that out first. Then insert the piece to measure for the outside corner. Make a mark on the corner on the molding with an eighth inch extra for margin of error and trim back the piece to get the perfect fit. Repeat these steps on the other side of the corner before you nail everything in place. It will be more difficult to measure once the one side is nailed in. As we were marking up the left side of the corner, we discovered that the piece of spruce we installed for that section was not straight in some parts. So we had to pull it off the wall and replace it with a straight piece 
to get the corner to line up correctly. I'm showing you these mistakes so you can avoid them in your project. We continue to work around the room to install the rest of the molding. On this wall, above the window, we discovered a slight belly on the ceiling that is not visible otherwise. But luckily, with our installation method, we have the spruce backer that we can use to shape the molding to around the belly. Now that we have all the pieces installed, this is what the progress looks like before it's caulked and painted with the final coat. Next, let's go over how to caulk the nail holes as well as the top and bottom of the trim. We use the DAP Alex Flex Caulk, specially made for the trim pieces because it's paintable and it doesn't shrink when it dries. Cut the tip at about a 45 degree angle. The smaller the hole on the tube, the easier it will be to manage the application of the caulk. It's always better to apply a little more caulk than try to remove the excess. Apply the caulk on top and the bottom of the trim in short runs using finger to press into the gaps and to remove the access. Both the application of the caulk and the smoothing of the caulk with your finger should be done in the same direction, otherwise you'll be pulling the caulk out of the gaps. Also it's important to keep your finger damp for smoothing to get a better result. For this, keep a wet rag or a paper towel on you to wipe your finger into. You can also use a wet paper towel to remove excess caulk if you accidentally get it on the wall or ceiling before it dries. As for the nails holes, use the excess caulk you removed to fill those just like so. Let the caulk dry and the molding is ready for paint. Lightly sand the finished product and then paint the same way as during prep. Here's the look at the finished product. I think it turned out pretty good. Thank you guys so much for watching another one of my videos. If you enjoyed it, please hit the like button. If you loved it, then just go ahead and subscribe now. We have plenty more where these came from. See you in the next one.